Hello everybody and welcome to another Fundamental Games game playthrough. Using Tabletop Simulator we're going to be playing Tiny Ninjas Heroes. Uh, this is a new version of the Tiny Ninjas game and if anybody's not heard of Tiny Ninjas basically it's a two-player dice rolling head-to-head -head card game designed to play right inside the box and this version is a little different but with the same concept. This here would actually be what the inside of the box would look like and the lid of the box and you'd be playing right in the box with different heroes. I'm going to actually be playing the Heroes Apocalypse one player version of the game which has a special player board and um, kind of a zombie darker theme to it but still very much using the same concepts of the two player game. Um, this game is got a different aspect to it as well so it's got four standard heroes but the, or, uh, four standard ninjas, but then it brings into play a more powerful character called a hero that joins the standard ninjas that you might have seen from the regular game. Uh, in the standard game, you'd be playing four ninjas each, and they would be opposing each other, kind of a red blue red team and a blue team, and then each player would get their own special ninja character, which all look very cool, by the way. And you'll see that if you check out their Kickstarter page. Um, and then each of them has a special die that helps reflect their health. So you don't actually roll the die. Um, it's just used to indicate how much health each individual character is at. All right, but we're diving into Apocalypse, the one-player game. So you can see on this board here, uh, there's four different zombie ninjas. And they're going to be playing with different um, priorities and sequences that are all kind of automated, which is really cool. That's what you need in a solo player game, something that automates your enemy, uh, whether it's how they attack you, what they attack you with. You need the automations to make it simple to play, but still challenging. Now in this game, I'm going to play with these four ninjas. So we have Solo, Archer, Master, and Panda. How cute. Uh, all being led or accompanied by our hero, which is Legend. All right, and so we're going to set up the game just like the rule book indicates, and I'll walk you through that real quickly. I do start with a shield, a potion, and a potion. Uh, so I'm going to read through the introduction in the rule book here. Actually, it has a neat little introduction. So it says here, The sun has set. The air is crisp. The forest lays quiet too quiet. Darkness washes overhead and fog rolls in. Suddenly groans and trill screams fill your ears. They're here. You are surrounded by the undead. You have no way of escape. The situation is dire. Defeat as many zombies as you can before your hero inevitably fails. All right, so that's the introduction here. First thing we're going to do is remove the three power scrolls. Um, so when you're setting up this game, you would take the standard deck and you would remove these three power scrolls from the deck because they're used for two-player mode only. And then uh, it says here we have to spawn zombies. So we need to do the solo, the archer, the master, and then the panda by spawning. And the spawn roll is used to determine where a zombie is going to be placed on the battlefield. And I have to roll the d4 die and a tiny ninja die to determine the lane and the section that we'll be playing in. So if we look here, we've got the d4 die and the tiny ninja die. And that's going to determine where the character is placed. So um, our little chart is still going to be played on this board here but where we're going to be placed all depends on that. So actually I'm going to move over this deck here and slide the round phases over here and we're just going to pick this board up all together and slide it over. All right. Just to make my life a little easier. Okay. So you can see here the 12 piece board. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, just forgive me, just setting it up for the first full time here. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the player starting area. Lane four, black and white. Okay. So I'm going to draw a little rectangle around here to help you guys picture what I'm doing. So this here is the player placement area. And so I'm just putting that over top so you can get a visualization of it. So when we start the game, first we place the zombies before we place our heroes. Um, Alright. And one, two, three, four, white or black. Alright. So we're gonna call white up here and black down here. So if we're gonna roll this die, roll them. So solo here is represented by the red die. We're gonna pull this over here. So this solo die here, represented by the red die. It's going to go in row number two and in the black section, which is the bottom. So they would spawn here at the beginning of the track. Then we'll roll again. And we have Archer, who is the purple here, will spawn in the white side in row number one. Then roll again. We have in row number one black, we have master so this guy here is going to spawn in the black which we said is on the bottom in row number one and then finally panda is going to spawn where we'll roll the dice Panda is going to spawn in white and three so here's panda white side in three so that's where they're all spawning that's how we start the game off and then i'm just going to double check my rules so, spawned in subsequent round spawns could be a little bit different if they spawn on the position of another character. But that's okay, that didn't happen during our roll. Um, so now I get to place my five ninjas in the player starting area. So what I would do is I would take my five ninja dice and put them in wherever I want. So we're just going to put our legend right here in the thick of things. Solo is pretty weak to damage, so we want to be careful with Solo. Let's put him kind of in the middle. Archer, put her even further away. And Master, put him close to some action here. And then Panda is kind of like a protector. We'll put him right in the middle. Okay, so we've positioned our five dice. Next up, uh, start with two health potions, one EP, and one shield. So EP is my energy points. We start with one. The enemy doesn't play with energy points in this version. All right. And finally, place your shield, then start a round. Okay. So a shield is one of these, and what it will do is it'll help me protect me from damage in a particular area. So let's say I want to put my shield here. So I've now done the whole beginning of the round, the setup of the game. All right, so the setup of the game, you do have to refer to the rule book, which is what I was kind of reading off screen here. But um, after that, then we go into the round phases, which are all conveniently right on the board. Uh, there's a bunch of different phases. If we look here, uh, spawn roll, I'm going to roll the dice and spawn something, zombie roll roll all three dice and set the fog location, which are black cubes here. Um, and then zombies will attack. I defend. I'll gain income. I'll get to move. I'll take my actions. I'll attack. And then if the fog is in a lane, deduct one damage. So I'll have to read what that means in a sec here. Okay, let's start at the beginning. Roll d4 and tn dice to spawn. So let's see if we're going to spawn more at the beginning of the first round. So if any zombies were slain last round, we spawn them now. If all four zombies are in play, skip this phase. So you skip it in the first turn. Then the zombie roll. Roll all three dice 
and set the fog and then determine zombie. All right. The determined zombie will gain three movement points and make an attack. So I roll all three dice. So all three dice refer to this die, this die, and this die. You can see here, one, two, three, four. So this d4 is going to determine which ninja zombie is going to be moving and attacking. This die here is going to determine... Um, let's just double check what that determines. So the tn die is going to determine... D4, D6, and TN set fog, determine zombie. Okay, let's go back to here. We'll just roll all three. Roll. Okay. So we know that we're playing with solo. So, uh, this guy here is going to be the focus. And solo. Um, has rolled a one white archer icon on the this here and it's got a six so six determines the fog location so if you can see here fog which is the two black cubes they're going to go in this lane and this lane so these lanes are dark with fog all right so that's the black die the red die determines the ninja and the white die determines the ninja's attack now the ninja will move before they attack, and they move on a predetermined sequence. So that sequence uh, means that they're going to move three towards the closest ally that is not shielded, that is in fog. So if we take a look at the chart here, the closest ally that is not shielded, so there is no shield here, here, or here, and we're fighting with solo. So the closest ally that's not in a shield and is in a fog would be here. So if with three movement I can get there, one, two, three, that's exactly where they're going to go, regardless of the danger that the poor zombie puts himself in, because they're mindless. They just want to attack the weak. So that looks like a fair move. One, two, three uh, movement points. If you want to move diagonal, I believe that costs you two points, because it's the same as moving there. And you cannot move through other ninjas. Okay, so the zombie makes it there. Then the zombie rolled um, at, at the beginning of combat. Oh, but they have to move in a position where they can attack diagonal. So you can see here, solo can only strike diagonal to um, one square. So one, two, three, it actually cannot attack the other solo. So the next closest thing they can attack that's in a fog and unshielded is our dear Archer. So I guess we're going after Archer. And it says here, deal blank damage in one direction. If you roll a 1, you'll deal 2 damage. If you roll a 2, you deal 1 damage. And if you roll 3, you do 3 damage. Uh, so what does that mean? That means the number of arrows on here. Um, so if you see, if I roll this dice some more, or rotate it, um, there's a different number of spears for each one. Well, I only rolled a 1, and if you roll a 1, it says here, deal 2 damage in one direction. So that would then deal 2 damage to our dear ninja. So how can we prevent that? Well, let's see, she doesn't have anything on her defense that can do anything. But Panda here, who is... Oh, not adjacent to her, so the panda can't protect her. So let's just quickly read about a potion. That might be the only way to save our hero. We don't want them to die already. So I'll be checking the original rule book. Double check what all, all the items do. Items play a big role in the game. Um, so items provide players with a variety of tools to adjust, assist in conjunction with abilities. Items are only used during a player's action phase. So we might already be hooped here. And things happen. I mean, you're fighting a horde of zombies, somebody's going to die. So this person takes two damage. Um, and so going from one to zero, that would actually remove the ninja from the map. And that ninja has been defeated. Archer didn't even stand a chance. It's 
like when you get surprised and get bitten by a zombie when you turn a corner. Um, you might be doomed, but the rest will stay alive and fight on in your honor. So Archer, we're fighting for you this game. Alright, we proceed. So we've determined the objective to priority, we've dealt the damage, and we move on. Oh, let's just talk about defense. Maybe I have a chance. We'll put her back. It's not over yet. It says here, use shields and or defend abilities. Archer does not have a defend ability. Defend ability is indicated by... Yeah, the shield, so we don't have a defendability. Some of these um, heroes will have a defendability, but not her. I'll just double check the rule book one more time, make sure I'm not misrepresenting the game here. Look at the defense rules. So defender may attempt to reduce the attacker's damage by activating one or more shields and or using one or more defendability. Defending against damage is optional. You can choose not to defend and just lose HP instead. Um, so either way, I do not have a shield in this aisle to block me. The panda is too far away and I don't have a defense ability. So Archer is indeed gone. So we're sorry, Archer. Flip you over and that is a fight for you. Now we move on to my movement phase. I gain three MP to use with as I wish, and I can take up to three actions. Use a single ability. So I believe I have to choose a hero. I think I can only choose one, but we're gonna make sure um, that on my turn, I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Got to jump back to the main rule book here. So during my move, attacker uh, each round consists of five phases: income, move, action, attack, and defense. Income, attacker gains an energy point and an item. This is during regular game, and then immediately uses three movement points. Mm -hmm. Each round, I believe you can only select one ninja. I can't move multiple ninjas around. I'm kind of picking one ninja. You got to think this is happening split second, and you're kind of uh, just figuring out how to make everything work in this really fast battle that could be happening. So, who are we going to? What are we going to try to do? We could try to slay Solo. We've got Legend who can deal damage in one direction. You can see that five in purple is there. EP, they'd have to spend five points to do that massive amount of damage. And I'm only at one EP right now. So, uh, gain one EP or item, not both. I'm gonna gain one EP. I can't gain both. And then I can move and gain, move up to three. So, maybe we're gonna leave Solo there and go after somebody else. Because if we kill Solo, they're just gonna respawn right away. Hmm. Who do we want to fight with though? We have Master, who can deal up to two damage. Panda, who's not really a fighter, just deals a damage. Slash might deal two damage. This guy's got a rage. Add blank damage when attacking with slash or blade storm. Hmm. We'll just, we're going to put our hero right into action and move one, two, this guy can attack in any direction, one square. So we're going to do one, two, and move him there. Then I can take up to three actions. So what kind of actions can you take? Well, according to the rule book, you have a multitude of actions you can take on a turn. You can buy a shield for two EP. You can sell any two items for one EP, use an item, or use a support ability. So I don't have any support abilities. The only support ability is a bear hug, and I'm not using Panda. Um, I have two EP, so I could buy another shield, which will help protect 
Maybe my solo. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to buy a shield. Put that in this row. So I have no EP. I can't use any special abilities. So now I can... I'll be done with my action phase because I have nothing else I can do. Um, I could sell two items, but I don't want to. So now we go to attack. The attacker may use one attack ability against an enemy. Some attacks can damage more than one ninja, but attacks cannot damage allies. If an attack cannot be made, the round ends here. And the zombie gets a chance to... Does the zombie defend? No, a zombie does not defend, so that's a bonus. So I'm going to be attacking. You can see here, as legend, I'm going to have... Oh, it cost me a point to attack with my slash. So let's take that back. Take the shield back. Because if I want to even fight... Uh, so that's one thing to remember with the heroes, is that you have to spend action points. So we'll spend an action energy point to attack this guy. Um, I can attack one in any direction, dealing one or two damage. So I will roll this die. And the result is one arrow white. So this shows white, this shows black. If I roll white, I deal one damage. If I roll black, I do two damage. That simple. Um, and then what is the rage? The rage means that you can add an extra damage if you roll three sword icons. But I did not, so I'm just going to do one damage to this guy. Do some two at three. Okay. And then the fog. If fog is in lane, deduct one damage. So if there were fog in this lane, I would have dealt zero damage. So you've got to be careful not to attack where the fog is. And then we start the next round. So sorry for the first round taking so long, but we'll speed it up now. We'll roll the dice. We are playing with one. So we're playing with solo again. Solo, the fog is actually going to stay here because it's rolled a six again. And their attack is going to be worth two. Now, who are they going to attack? Well, they're going to attack the um, first person, closest person they can find that is not shielded in the fog. The closest person they can find that is not shielded in the fog is the person he's right in front of, so he doesn't even have to move. And he attacks with two black, which um, you see here, rolling a two will only deal one damage. Um, so I'm going to be dealing one damage to Solo. Panda's going to jump up and say, wait, my friend, I'm going to protect an ally and deal the damage to the Panda instead, costing me one EP. Uh, so the Panda takes the damage, he's a lot more hardier, be at four, and Solo will survive. All right, so we did the spawn. We didn't do a spawn roll because nothing was dead. We did a zombie roll. We did a zombie attack. Um, Solo here didn't have a defense ability. And then we go to income. So I will gain an AP or a card. Uh, let's gain a card this round. Show you that. So I'll gain a card. All right, and we're going to go to the move phase, gain 3 MP, so I've got that. I will choose a, take up to 3, use a single attack ability. So action, take up to 3 actions, move, gain 3 MP. I'm just going to double check the movement. I might actually be able to move multiple ninjas. Um, let's look at move. Attacker gains and immediately uses three movement points. So I think I can use those through multiple characters. Movement points are used to move your ninjas in the arena. Use MP to move one space horizontally. Can't be saved. So yeah, I can move multiple ninjas in a turn. So apologies for that. So I've got three movement points. We're going to go one, uh, um, two, and stay like that. So that's our movement. All right. 
After the movement point, we can take up to three actions. Again, the actions are in the rule book, which I don't have in front of you. I'm sorry, but I can see it. So I can buy a shield, sell any two items for one EP, use an item, or use a support ability. So I can use here a shield for one of my points and gain a shield. And I could use another of my three actions in the round to use a second shield. And put it over here. It might be a waste. You know what? I'm not going to use that. I think I'm better off staying in the middle. So I'll save that shield. And then we could use a potion for zero just to heal our dear panda back up. Alright, so panda's back to. Uh, five. Okay, so we've used our actions up. Now we can attack. Um, so we can choose a single character that's within range to attack with. A single attack ability. So we can use solo against solo. Might as well. So solo can only attack diagonal. Oh, I had one point left for movement, so let's put him there. All right. Solo's going to attack. When solo attacks, I get to roll this die. Doesn't cost me any EP. Roll. We have three swords. You can see here, whether it's black or white is all. There's no bonus. So this is black. So I'm going to do two damage to their solo, who happens to be in fog. So it only does one damage, but that's enough to kill their solo. All right. When I kill a solo, scoring. Mm -hmm. Per remaining EP or item, per defeated zombie solo, I gain two points. So these here are just um, little points, so I gain two points. We'll just put these up here. Two points, I'll say I have. Okay. And then fog. The fog is in lane D, duck one damage. I already did that. We start the next round, do a spawn roll, and the spawn roll matters now. Why? Because there's a dead solo. So this is going to tell us where solo spawns. So solo spawns in um, six. So, oh, this one here. So solo spawns in row four in the white so up top so solo spawns here the new zombie all right and then the zombie roll roll all three dice so the acting zombie is going to be solo who happens to be alive again the fog is a six again so it stays where it is that guy really likes sixes and two black now solo is going to move if he can to the first character that's not in or that is in fog that's unshielded so the first character has got three movement he would move here oh but he has to attack diagonal and he can't reach somewhere that's diagonal so the only character he can attack that's in the fog that is unprotected is master all right and then two black um deals one damage and that one damage is shielded so when it's shielded I can choose to take the damage or remove the cube I will choose to take the damage so, so masters at three all right we go back to my turn I was supposed to gain zombie attacked I defended gain an EP or an item I'm gonna gain EP this turn and then move three movement points. Um, we're going to say, you know, Master can attack any direction. Solo can only attack diagonal. So let's put one, two, three. I'm going to attack that archer there. Alright, then use a single ability, so we're using Master, 
Master can spend three points to deal a damage in all directions, or zero to roll to die. So we'll do zero to roll to die. We rolled three. Three does two damage, and they're not in the fog, so two damage right to the archer, Obamo. And defeating the archer is worth three points, so we'll take three points. Yay. Um, and then that's the end of that round. So we need to respawn our lovely archer. So we're going to respawn with the row. So the row is one and the color is white. So she's going to go right back here. All right, then we're going to roll the zombie roll. The fog is finally moving. So you can see the fog moves to aisle one and row three so the fog is in place we're going to be playing with master this turn and he's going to have one so master which is this guy here he's going to move three to the closest person he can that's in the fog that he can attack so the closest person he can attack in the fog would be right here and then rolling a one under master um, you can see master has orange green and purple so I can actually do extra damage with purple I've got orange to one damage just gonna double check one thing here why this is orange and this is white um, oh he always deals one damage but could deal it in two directions if he has two swords that part I'm not 100% clear on but there's only one guy next to him and he's going to do one damage um, this one says deal blank damage in one direction and that determines the damage that three is the range so his range is only one one damage in one direction because it's orange okay we do one damage and legend has no defensive capabilities so legend takes a hit it's down to two all right and oh i was behind a shield you know what? We'll use that shield. Wah -pa, protect ourselves. Yeah, this, this guy couldn't get to a place that nobody was shielded. So went to the first guy that was not shielded. And couldn't get to a place that was out of the fog. We're in the fog. All right, all right. So I'm not going to play through the entire game with you because this could take me a while on Tabletop Simulator, but I did want to show you how combat works, how the automation works for Heroes Apocalypse, and um, how the, the clever use of the dice. What I did want to do is just kind of reflect on this newly launched click Kickstarter and kind of show you some of the cool close-ups of the cards, of the playing mat, of the combat style, particularly in solo mode because I enjoy solo. and and I'll show you case some of the art as well so I mean if you look at these they're beautiful on the back really well done art and when you flip them over it's a miniature version of the art with the, the cool graphic overlay of their abilities I like that um, if we search through the item deck you'll see there's all kinds of different things that can help roll twice on your next attack you get the best result move shields gain EP so lots of little trinkets you can get smoke bombs um, the agility, gotta love that T, gain 2 MP, movement points. Uh, so items can be very useful and um, just really like how he put it all together. The first Kickstarter for this did very, very well for a first time creator and so now he's back 
at it with the sequel, Tiny Ninjas Heroes. And playing on a digital format, you can't see how innovative the box is, but this does play right inside the box. This would be the box lid where you store cards or you could use to roll dice. And it's all just very compact, so love what it has to share. And um, take a look at the Kickstarter, see if you like it. It's by Ryan Leininger and um, Tiny Ninjas Heroes has many videos by much better producers than me. Uh, I believe there's one from Quackalope. I believe there's might be a tantrum one, so check those out as well. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.